Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to go into a little bit about wrinkle reducers, Botox, just kind of giving you guys some more information on it. Who should use them? Why we should use them? Are you the right candidate for it? If you have any questions about it, just leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them. But before we begin this, just a little disclaimer. I'm not here to force anyone to getting cosmetic procedures or treatments or anything along those lines. It's really just to educate you and just kind of be more open and erase that taboo with injectables and with cosmetic treatments. However, I will not tolerate anyone shaming or bashing an individual because they get any cosmetic treatment or procedure. Everyone has the right to make their own decision and do what they think is best for them and whatever makes them happy. So if doing Botox or doing a cosmetic treatment or procedure makes them happy, then let them go for it. You shouldn't be there to judge that person. That's not up to you to decide what's best for them. Just keep that in mind when it comes to these videos. I'm really here to educate and yes, I do Botox and no, I'm not gonna force anyone to get it, but if questions come about, I will be there to answer them. And yeah, that's what I do as a aesthetic PA. So yeah, Yes. I like Botox and I like getting wrinkle reducer treatment, but it doesn't mean that, you know, every single person that I meet on the street, I'm going to tell them you have to get Botox. Like it doesn't work like that. But anyway, now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about wrinkle reducers or neuromodulators. So there are a couple on the market. I'm sure you've all heard of Botox. There's Botox, Javo, Dysport, Xeomin. They're all different types of neuromodulators or wrinkle reducers. And I like to think of them as kind of like aloe versus Lululemon or Nike versus Adidas. For some patients or for some people, they prefer Lululemon over aloe. For some people, they like Adidas sneakers versus Nike. And that's exactly how I like to choose a neuromodulator for my patient, really based on their muscle activity and what I think suits them. It's really just what that provider deems necessary or suitable for you. What are these wrinkle reducers or what are neuromodulators such as Botox? So essentially, they are purified proteins that are used to relax any overactive muscle. And how do they work? Essentially, they block the neurotransmitter called acetylcholine, which results in a relaxed muscle, therefore it doesn't frequently contract. And where do we use Botox? So we use it in any overactive muscle. And where can that be? So mainly on the face, there are three different areas, or th I should say three more common areas that we treat. And that is in between the brows, the forehead and around the eyes. I always like to say when it comes to the forehead, the forehead is divided into two different areas. So we have the middle over here, which forms those 11 lines. And then we have the forehead, which forms the horizontal lines that we have across the forehead itself. I'm not gonna get into all the muscles and everything like that. I wanna make this video appealing to both people not in medicine and people in medicine. So we always recommend to do these two areas together. The muscles work together. Sometimes if you just relax one, the other one can overcompensate. And also it looks a little bit more natural when you actually have two areas relaxed together. So this, by doing some wrinkle reducer here, can give you a little bit of a lift in your eyebrows here. And then by also doing this area here, just kind of gives you that smooth, flawless look on the forehead. I do these two areas. I think they look really natural together. The other area that I also do is the crow's feet. So this muscle is a perfectly round muscle. Think of it like a sphincter. When you relax it, it just opens up. And that's exactly what it does to the eye area. So it'll open up the eye area. It will give you a little bit of a uh, eyebrow lift and then as well as it will help relax those horizontal lines that you get when you smile really big. I do all three areas personally for me and for my taste and for my face these three areas work well for me. But what are the other areas that we can inject Botox in? We can inject it into our master muscle. So this muscle right here we use this muscle for chewing. So sometimes patients will have like a bulky muscle down here. That's what causes TMJ or pain and it's also with patients who grind their teeth we can inject some Botox down here into that master muscle. So one, it will help you with TMJ or with grinding your teeth. And then two, it will also give you more of a cosmetic effect. So it will kind of slim out the lower face. We can inject it in a muscle up here that pulls our lip up. So if we have a gummy smile or someone has a gummy smile, we put some wrinkle reducer right in here to help relax that gummy smile. Also a lip flip. It's very common on social media now, putting some Botox above the upper lip to relax the muscle around our lip. 
by putting some Botox here, we can kind of just give some more upper lip exposure if some patients aren't ready for some dermal filler. Another area where we can put it in is in the chin. So if someone has some dimpling or what we call the orange peel in the chin, so we can put some Botox in there to help relax that chin. We could also put Botox in another muscle down over here. If someone looks sad a lot and the size of their mouth or these little areas right here are pointing down, we could relax that muscle to kind of help point it up so they actually appear happy and not sad. We can put it in these little lines that we get here called the bunny lines. So that's essentially a kind of just a rundown of different areas that we could use Botox. A common misconception by doing this is that we're going to look frozen and unnatural and that's really not the case. I personally don't think I look frozen or unnatural, especially where I work. Our whole aesthetic is to really, really, really maintain a natural look. Um, you'll always be able to lift your eyebrows up. We're not going too low and relaxing this portion of of your forehead. We could always do something called baby Botox or baby dosing where we do a little sprinkle across the whole entire forehead so you're not totally, totally frozen. And then another common misconception is, you know, I'm only X and Y, I'm only 30 or I'm only 25. Am I the right candidate? And really what I like to say to patients is, if you see lines at rest, you're the right candidate. And really it's just to prevent those lines from becoming deeper. And that's why there's no certain age that you begin doing wrinkle reducer treatment. It's really when we see lines at rest that you can start doing it to prevent those lines from becoming deeper. Okay, what to expect during the treatment. So you'll actually come along with me to see my treatment because I'm actually due for my Botox. Essentially, we're gonna take some photos before we're gonna clean the area, we're gonna mark the area, mark your muscles, and then we use really, really small needles to inject the product into the muscle. Once the product is injected, you will see some little wheels or like little mosquito bite bumps. That's totally normal. That will go away in about 20 minutes. Product is mixed with normal saline, so really it's your body just absorbing that. Could there be a risk of a bruise? Absolutely. We're sticking a needle to the face. So there's always a risk of a bruise. We'll ice the area before to help reduce that chance. You could avoid alcohol, ibuprofen, NSAIDs, or fish oils, any type of other supplements that thin out your blood before and after your treatment just so we can prevent the bruising, but we cannot guarantee that you're not gonna bruise. There's always that chance. The common question that we get is how long does it last? Typically with any wrinkle reducer, it will kick in in a couple of days and it peaks in two weeks. So in two weeks is when you'll see the full effect. And then it will last about three to four months. I'm on that four month schedule. For me, after four months, I'm pretty worn off and I'm ready for my new treatment. Some people can be two months, some people can be three months. It really depends on your muscles. It really depends on your activity levels. So if you work out a lot, you can metabolize the product a lot quicker. And yes, we do recommend to continue doing it. It's kind of part of like your beauty regimen. I like to think of it. If you do it once, then, you know, and, and you hate it, then okay, in three or four months, it's gonna be totally metabolized. But if you do it once and you really like it and you wanna maintain that effect and those results, then the key is to really be consistent with it. So who should avoid it? So we always tell anyone who is pregnant or breastfeeding or any neurological disorder to avoid it. But of course, of course, of course, please consult your healthcare provider before getting the treatment. You could always come for a consult before actually getting the treatment. Some post-care after the treatment, just no working out for the rest of the day. I already worked out this morning, so I'm good. We always say to avoid putting your head below your heart, like any yoga positions for the next couple of hours, avoiding any facials or massages for at least the 10 to 14 day mark, just to be safe, avoiding alcohol or NSAIDs just to decrease the risk of bruising. You could always take some, you know, Arnica tablets, if it's okay with your provider, to help with decreasing the bruising. And then also eating some pineapple is always great. It has some bromelain, which has some anti-inflammatory and anti-bruising properties to help decrease that risk of a bruise. That's essentially a rundown about Botox. So a little Botox 101. The best, best, best thing to do is go to your provider and get a consult. I love doing consults because it's really that time where you can educate patients on just different treatments, on things that will work best for their face, things that will work best with them. And also it's different when just like watching videos or a virtual consult with then being in person because you could actually see the animations and actually see the patient's muscle activity. In my practice, we do consults all the time. You can even do a consult and then do the treatment that day. I have lots of patients who do that, but yeah, 
Other than that, leave some comments below. If you have any questions or concerns, just let me know. But like I said, one, don't judge anyone for doing any cosmetic procedures. That's none of your business. Two, always consult with your healthcare provider before doing any treatments. And three, go get a consult if you're interested in doing Botox or any wrinkle reducer. On that note, let's go get my Botox done. All right, everyone. So I'm gonna be walking in now to get my treatment. Yes, I changed my shirt, but let's go do this. done in like 20 minutes and you don't even see little bumps anymore so that's it that was fun other than that you probably already know how I look with Botox in my photos and my videos I could always take a little video all right stay tuned 